Hello and welcome to this Sales 1.0 tutorial video. Today we're going to do just a quick tutorial on using Sales 1.0 with Webpack. Webpack is a popular asset bundler for JavaScript. Sales apps already come set up to use the Grunt Task Manager for bundling assets, but some people prefer the approach that Webpack takes, which encourages a more modular approach to building your front-end code. Now, normally when we create a new sales app, uh, we do it by using the sales new command in the terminal. But the quickest way to get started using Webpack with sales is to clone the sales Webpack seed project that we've already created and uploaded for you. You can find that in the sales HQ GitHub organization. So if we just go to that web page, get the URL for cloning the repo, and then in our terminal we type git clone, and then paste in that URL, and we give it a new name, and voila, we've got our own copy. Uh, then we'll, see, we'll cd into the new directory and npm install to get sales and the other dependencies that we need, including Webpack itself. Now we can lift the app, go to localhost 1337, and you'll see the familiar new sales app homepage with a slight difference in that it mentions Webpack at the top here. So let's take a look at this app and I'll point out some of the differences between the standard new sales app and the Webpack seed app. First of all, you'll notice that there's no tasks folder. The tasks folder is where the sales grunt tasks are typically stored. And since we're not using grunt, we don't need that folder at all. The next thing to notice is the config slash Webpack JS file. This is a configuration file that the app uses to tell Webpack how to behave. You can go to the Webpack site to learn all about how to use the configuration file. Uh, everything in this main directory here uses the Webpack 2 config format. So anything you can do with Webpack, you can do in this config. I'll point out a couple of the important points here, but you can totally change this file to suit your needs. So the entry property here lets Webpack know which files to look at when it's bundling your assets. In the case of our seed project, we have one main JavaScript file called homepage.js. Uh, that doesn't mean that our whole front end only consists of one JavaScript file, but that this homepage.js will import any of the other files it needs. Uh, we'll take a look at that uh, homepage file in a second so you can see what I mean. And again, you can set this up however you want, but the way the seed project is set up is that you'd add another property to this entry dictionary for every separate page in your sales app. Uh, basically for every view that you have. So if you're doing a single page app, you'll only probably have that one entry. If your app has a login view, a home page view, a profile view, etc., you do one entry for each of those views, basically for each separate page that your app will load. Uh, next, this output section tells Webpack where to place the bundled files and what to call them. In this case, it'll take the name of the entry point add.bundle.js to it and save it to .temp slash public slash js. It's a good idea to just leave that as it is uh, since sales apps serve all of their static assets out of that .temp slash public folder by default. After output, we have a rules dictionary which tells Webpack what to do when it encounters uh, .less and .css files. It's important to keep in mind here that unlike the default grunt tasks, which basically loop over every file in your asset entry dictionary and kind of follows the links from there based on what other files are imported from those entry files. So in order to get your CSS or less files processed, you actually have to reference them in your entry file or in some other file that the entry file imports. And again, we'll see how that works when we actually look at the homepage.js file. And finally, we have this plugins dictionary which sets up a few standard Webpack plugins, uh, one which pulls all the bundled CSS into separate files instead of putting it directly in the JavaScript file, uh, one which cleans out the .temp slash public folder for you when sales lifts, and one that copies static assets like images and fonts into .temp slash public even if they're not referenced directly in your JavaScript or CSS files. Uh, if you have other static asset files you want copied over, like if you had downloadable PDFs or anything like that, you'll want to add uh, those directories to this dictionary for the Copy Webpack plugin. So now let's go ahead and take a look at that assets slash js slash homepage.js file. 
you'll see there's not really much in there, but it's important to understand how Webpack sees this file. Um, first off, we have this require call, which references our homepage.less file. So Webpack will see that require, uh, the require call, load in that file, and compile it, compile the less into CSS, and then add the result to a homepage.bundle.css file. And if we added any more .less or .css requires here, those would all be bundled into that same homepage bundle CSS file. The name of the CSS file is based on this entry point, which in this case is homepage.js, so it's you know, use that homepage name to uh, name the CSS file. Uh, next, we have this io equals require dot dot slash dependencies slash sockets dot js. Uh, in a default sales app, you normally include sales io js in a script tag in your HTML, and that loads the sales socket client. In the webpack seed, we've wrapped that file within sockets.js to get around some issues that can arise when you're requiring the socket client from multiple scripts. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that with the default grunt tasks, all of your JavaScript files are typically included via HTML script tags in your views. Uh, so anything that those files export is global. For instance, if you lift a typical sales app and then go into the JavaScript console, you can type io.socket.get and io.socket is globally available. With Webpack, any modules re you require are restricted to the scope of the current script. So within homepage.js, I can use io.socket because I've assigned the result of requiring sockets.js to this io variable. But right now, if I just lift this app and go to the homepage and open the developer console, you'll see that io.socket is not defined. If you really want to make something a global, you have to add it to the window variable manually. The next file we want to briefly look at in the seed project is API slash hooks slash webpack slash index.js. This is an app level hook that starts webpack in the watch mode so that it does an initial bundling when sales lifts and then rebundles the assets whenever one of the files it touches has changed. You shouldn't really have to touch this file at all, uh, but it's good to know that it's there and that this is how sales is actually running Webpack. The last thing to check out here in this app is the views. Uh, if we look at the layout.ejs file, you'll notice that there's no script or style tags and that the, the grunt linker tags that you might notice in other sales apps, uh, those scripts and scripts end tags aren't there. Uh, for the webpack seed, we're just including the CSS and JavaScript files manually in the HTML in the homepage.ejs file that we can see here. So that's about it. You can clone and use this webpack seed project to get started using sales with webpack. And as you get more comfortable with using webpack, you can update that config slash webpack.js file to do more with it. Have fun.